name is Inge van der Ven, and I'm an assistant professor at Tilburg University in the Netherlands at the Department of Culture Studies. Uh, Menno, can I introduce you? Uh, yeah, I can also introduce myself. Yeah, so we haven't decided exactly how we're dividing the content, so we'll just uh, do it as we go. Uh, so I'm Menno van Zaan. I'm currently a professor in digital humanities at the uh, South African Center of Digital Language Resources. Um, but what we're going to talk about here uh, is uh, a project that uh, happened while I was still in Tilburg uh, University as well. So that's the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the setting. So the um, school that we were both working for and that I'm still embedded in is called uh, TSHD. It's uh, Tilburg School of Humanities and Digital Sciences, which means that this kind of cooperation is quite uh, promoted in our school. And when I came to work here, uh, I wanted to do a joint research traineeship program, which means that uh, several researchers from different uh, departments are put together to work on a joint research problem. And then they get funding to hire two research trainees who are students. And then people told me, you have to talk to Menno van Zane because he is the one who always fixes our problems, basically from the qualitative side or from the cultural studies side, which usually I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Menno, amounted to you summarizing a big, I don't know, big bodies of information for someone or uh, um, giving them access to some database or uh, basically uh, helping them out. And we wanted to do something a bit more uh, fundamental, I think. So what we ended up with doing was uh, we wanted to bridge the gap between close and distant reading, which uh, we saw in a lot of existing research projects that either distant reading in literary studies was uh, more conceptualized as replacing close reading or uh, in a provocative sense as making it obsolete. Whereas when we were looking at actual research projects, often these same scholars were still reading. And the way in which they combined close and distant reading, how we saw it was that they often do so in a quite top-down way. So they use what we call the information-seeking mantra, where you start out with a distant reading and you get some overview of a field, and then you zoom in and you filter results, and then you get to some interesting details or patterns for close reading. And we thought uh, we wanted to do something else, so what we ended up doing was uh, to manually, uh, to use manual annotations uh, to evaluate distant reading, in this case, an uh, LDA topic model, um, a distant reading. So we wanted to use close reading in a more autonomous sense, side by side with distant reading, instead of um, as a second step, so to speak. And this also kind of reflected our research uh, group. So we had uh, two people, from uh, computational uh, linguistics, how do you say it? Linguistics. And we had two people from cultural studies and we decided to split up into two groups and have two autonomous analyses of uh, the, same, um, uh, the, the same data sets and then come together and see how we could bridge this gap. So this was very much uh, a bottom up uh, exper experiment, so to speak. So maybe uh, I can, can first- I quickly, uh, very... yeah, Can, oh, I, yeah, can sure. I quickly chime in? Um, so, so I, I, of course, I completely agree with what you say. I just want to highlight a few minor things. Um, so the, um, the funding that we received for the uh, student assistance, so essentially this, uh, this collaboration, that uh, the, the proposal that we wrote and submitted, that was in a call that was specifically aimed to uh, kind of enforce collaboration between two departments. So you could not apply as two researchers from the same department. You had to find another researcher from another department and that helped uh, increase this collaboration within the school but really between different departments uh, and there were a few departments that were more uh, active in that in that sense so culture studies was quite active and uh, cognitive science and artificial intelligence uh, you, you see that most of the calls were in, in that direction um, and another thing and we were kind of talking about that just now you were just talking about that now the um, the idea that we divided this project essentially into two smaller sub-projects um, that had several reasons. So one was uh, um, started talking about close and distant reading. Um, to be honest, I actually did really have a view of it. Um, so we tried to figure out exactly what that meant and 
clearly Inge had an idea and I apparently had a different idea and we couldn't figure out exactly what we were going to do in that sense. Um, stopped by splitting project to two smaller projects and then constantly checking what are we doing? Are we still uh, working towards the same end? Um, we hope to get a better idea of exactly what this close and distant reading was. Uh, for me, I think for the uh, culture studies people, uh, researchers more get a better feeling of what, what do the computational linguistic things, techniques do they, and how do they work. Um, so we had constant meetings, checking, we're still doing the same things, trying to get a sense of what, what does all this terminology mean from the other field um, and, and how can we get this to work? Uh, Inge, did you want me to go on the computational stuff? Yes, yeah, so maybe first close reading because we started out with that. Um, yeah, that's, that's who that I, first. Okay, so I teamed up with uh, one of our research trainees as manual annotators. We selected a Reddit thread you see the title here. It was uh, on the subreddit uh, politics and we selected a thread called should the Democrats nominate a celebrity in 2020? Still quite current. What would be the pros and cons? And we decided to go with the set like this because it was only 40, 449 responses which is still readable so we wanted to use human reading to evaluate the outcome of the topic model. And what we did was we started reading in a very bottom-up fashion. So we would just label the different uh, responses to this question on the thread as we went along. And we color-coded all the different labels. And we ended up with about 15 classes. It's not so important now. And what was important was that as we went uh, labeling and color-coding them, we saw that new groups of questions also emerged. So it's not that you start out with a question like this, and people very neatly stay within the parameters um, uh, posed by this. So the outcome of the close reading, I think if I can only mention one thing, it was interesting that it was not only opinions or only answers to the question that we found, but also a lot of things that we grouped under discourse function. So there was a lot of self-referential comments, a lot of irony, a lot of in-jokes, and these were particularly things that are very hard to, uh, to address only through the LDA topic model approach, I would say. So, so far for the close reading, so Menno then did, um, from the other um, end of the gap, did the LDA topic model. Yeah, exactly. So the idea that we um, uh, had to take was essentially the same task as the, um, the, 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 how do you say, the qualitative uh, approach. Uh, so we wanted to end up with similar, uh, a similar distribution of these texts, right? So a similar labeling of this text, but um, by, because we separated the, the project into smaller projects, we didn't know what the manual annotation would look like. So what we had to kind of guess, we had like, when both approaches were in a way unsupervised uh, because there was no tag set defined beforehand. So we had to try and find a similar annotation, a similar grouping of, of, of text, uh, but using a computational approach. So we used LDA, which is a unsupervised topic, uh, topic modeling um, approach, and simply try to group these texts automatically. And we thought about how to evaluate this. How can we compare the, the qualitative and the quantitative um, uh, annotation? So we worked a little bit on that. Um, and then the funny thing is that you, you work and you do things and things happen, um, a text are annotated, uh, and then at some point there's this kind of exciting moment where you actually start comparing these texts. Uh, you have no clue what's going to happen because I hadn't seen the manual annotation and um, the, 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 the culture studies uh, researchers hadn't seen the uh, automatic annotation. So it's really exciting. You really have no clue what's going to happen. Um, and uh, the results were actually um, not particularly good, <laughs> at least to start with. Um, but it's quite interesting if you then dive into it. So if you look at the numbers, which I do more from a computational side, it doesn't look particularly good. But then if you dive into it, you realize, wait a minute, there's actually other things going on there, um, which in, in, in my view fit more in the uh, kind of close reading uh, approach. Do you want to say something about that? 
Yeah, I, I think we I... can. This automatically goes towards the collaboration experience. For me, the, the yeah, most important so. lesson or the thing I, that struck me most was uh, how to come up with a research problem, basically, that we both regard as an actual problem. And I remember we had to laugh. There was a lot of misunderstandings during the meetings, but we had to laugh a lot because sometimes it seemed like you are trying to solve everything and we from the other side are trying to create more problems. It felt like that. So when we strike <laughs> towards something that is uh, not fitting into the model or the hypothesis, then we would be like all um, uh, activated. Whereas you and uh, the research trainee were then trying to make that more efficient and more smoothly and then by the reason away that problem. So I think that was very informative and very interesting for me. Okay, so the um, the uh, collaboration actually worked pretty well. Perhaps you can go to the, I think we have one more slide, right? Uh, that essentially oh, yes. explains uh, everything. So in a way we were forced to collaborate uh, because of the funding and it was actually really interesting because you are forced to look at new research, uh, new technologies, new methodologies, and then you're also forced to try to understand the other. Um, there were some difficulties essentially similar to the previous talk uh, terminological differences, you really have to try and figure out what does this mean uh, and how can we combine these methodologies and still get a, a useful uh, result. Um, anyway, I'm actually, I was actually very pleased with our, our collaboration. Uh, I hope Inga was as well. I think it was a lot of fun. Um, I think it only works though if you have researchers who are really open to kind of step across these boundaries and try to understand what the other uh, area is trying to do and how they work. Um, so I think that's essential if you want to do something like that. I've seen it also go wrong uh, in other uh, projects. So that's a suggestion if you want to try something like this as well. Ing, do you still have something to add? No. Okay. <laughs> I think that, <laughs> Thanks. Was, that was a great ending. Thank you for your yep, attention. Great. Yep, thank you. Thank you.